Enough theory. Let's show an example in PyQt. Fire up your IDE. I'm going to use Eclipse with PyRev installed for Python development. We are going to start off by using a QList widget, which is an item based widget. And then switch over to QList view, a model view based widget, so I can demonstrate how powerful model view programming is over item based programming. I bet a lot of you have used the designer, if not everyone. You might have noticed that QList widget allows you to add items inside the designer, while the QList view doesn't. Like so. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you were like, how the hell do I use a list view? There is no way of adding items. So, you might have committed yourselves into using a queue list widget because the fact that it's a lot easier to start off with, especially if you have never heard about the word model view. Actually, View based widgets are a lot easier to use once you learn them and they reduce the amount of complexity in your code by several magnitudes. Alright, so let's create our queue list widget and show it. Keep in mind, this is the bad one, the queue list widget one, which contains items. We're gonna create it just for demonstrating purposes of its weakness and why it should be avoided. Anyhow, we create a queue list widget here. We call the method show on it. When we run this, we get an empty window with no items inside. Let's add some items. To do that, I'm gonna create a queue string list. It's basically the same thing as the Python list, but dedicated for queue string objects used by Qt itself. It also has this nice operator which allows us to append string sequentially instead of writing much code like this. Q string, Q core, Q string, and then the name of the item or the object. Cool. And all and all we got to do now is just call add items on our list widget with the data supplied as a parameter. Cool, we get our list widget showing all the data. Okay, now let's create a combo box and add the same data list as items. And again, same data list. Combo box equals qt GUI q combo box. Show it. Add items data. We add the same data. But before running this time, I'm gonna make all the items editable on the list widget. <laughs> to do that, first I need the count of the amount of items. So we call list widget count whoa. And then we loop inside the range of that count We get the item of the current index. And finally we set its flags to the current flags so we don't overwrite anything. And then we set it to the flag called Q item editable. Item is editable. There we go. So what this does is make all the items editable for list widgets. Now if I run this, keep in mind as I said before, they use the same data. But when I rename here, it doesn't update on the other one. Even if I deselect and select something, it just doesn't work. Okay, so why is that happening? First off, both the widgets store a separate instance of the data. They need to display the same data, or that's at least what we want it to, but they store a completely unique instance of it. That's why item-based widgets are bad. How do we fix this? We have to commit ourselves into the 
signal system of PyQt and do a lot of connections to manually update the values. This gets even worse when the application gets larger as we need to keep track on a lot of stuff. Some small changes can even break the application with that type of system. So instead of continuing with what we have here, let's jump into model view programming with QListView and see how easy this problem becomes. Alright. Views don't store their items or data. They use what we call a model to interface with the data. That way, several views can use the same model and display the exact same data even if the data is renamed. No out of syncs occur. Had you used an item based widget instead of a model view widget, you would have to manually sync them as I said before. So let's get to it. Let's create our queue list view. Alright, there we have our view and here we call show. As before, we only get an empty window when we run this. Now, let's create our model, that is the interface the view will use to communicate with the data. There are several models that ships with Qt. We are going to use the simple one, which is called QStringListModel. This model operates on data stored in QStringList. Okay. Here is the model. Model equals Qt core Q string list. Oh wait, Qt GUI. Q string list model and pass the data to it. Okay, cool. We have our view, we have our model. Let's bind them together. All we need to do is write this. List view, set model, model. <laughs> now, when we run the application, we will get our queue list view displaying some data. As we see here. You can also rename them by default. Okay, now to the power of model view programming. Let's create a combo box as before. And another list view. Combo box equals Qt GUI, Qt combo box, combo box, set model. We're gonna set the same model and show it. Let's create another list view. Call it to Qt GUI, Qt list view. List view to show list view to set model. Okay, so we're gonna get three widgets. All of them use the same model. Let's see what happens when we run this. Alright. I'm gonna rename one to minus one with capital letters. Oh, when I pressed enter, all the other ones updated. Cool. Why is that? Well, it's because all of them use the same model. The model keeps only one instance of the data, and the views interface that model and submit when we rename or retrieve when it shows the data <laughs> from the model. Let's say I select 5 on the combo box and rename on this widget instant. Let's rename this to TechArt. Oh, all of them rename to TechArt. How lovely isn't that? As you saw, while I renamed an item inside a certain view, all the other views registered to the same model got the updates instantly. Isn't that cool, huh? We didn't have to do any work at all. The syncing is done behind the scenes for us. This allows us to store our data however we want it to, and let the model take care of fetching and submitting the changes. So we can use the same model even across different views as we saw, such as the combo box and the list view. Thanks for watching this tutorial, stay tuned for more model view programming tutorials for PyQt. Next chapter will be about creating our own widget view. The life cycle of these series will depend on you guys. Best regards, this is Yasin speaking, over and out.